Hi everyone, uh, my name is Alan Edwards. I am the Executive Director for Secondary Curriculum here for the Coffee County Schools. And I want to talk to you today a little bit about uh, the parent meetings we've had over the last couple of weeks. I want to cover the information that we've gone through in those meetings and uh, try to talk through um, the different ways that we serve kids here in the Coffee County School System uh, as they move from grade 6 through grade 12. So. I think probably the number one call that I get from parents, especially around registration time, is what the different levels of classes mean or what the different labels on classes mean. Uh, and it is kind of confusing because, you know, you, you think that everybody is college prep, and they are. You know, starting with the class of 2012, every kid in the state of Georgia graduates from high school uh, with a college preparatory diploma. Um, but that doesn't mean that all the classes mean the same thing. And every time our kids get schedules, uh, they have new information on them that the, the you know, parents may not be familiar with. So um, you may hear a class called an inclusion class. You may hear them called remedial or REP. You may hear a class called gifted or honors or accelerated, uh, advanced placement or dual enrollment. And those are really the different levels of classes that we offer here at Cobble County. So when we talk about inclusion classes, uh, what we're talking about are uh, classes in which um, special uh, education teachers work with a regular education teacher uh, to teach students with disabilities and regular education students side by side. So the, the goal is to provide students with disabilities access to a mainstream education uh, as opposed to a self-contained classroom where they may not be able to cover all the standards. Um, and if it's done really well, uh, if you walk into those classes, you can't really tell who the you know, special ed teacher is who the regular ed teacher is, you can't really tell who the students with disabilities are or who the regular ed students are because everyone's just kind of working together and both teachers work with both sets of students on a regular basis. Uh, the benefit to inclusion classes if your child is ever in an inclusion class is having that second teacher in there and then just smaller class sizes in general uh, classes. Remedial classes are somewhat new to Coffee County this year. We haven't done these very often in the class in the past. So depending on the school you're at, they may be called remedial or they may be called REP, uh, but it means basically the same thing. Uh, all it is is we've identified students who have uh, uh, some kind of a, a deficiency in, in reading or writing or math. They're behind grade level skill-wise when it comes to one of those three subjects. And so we're going to place them in smaller classes uh, with other students who are also struggling, and the teachers are going to cover both the content standards for that particular class, but they're also going to try to remediate those skills that uh, you know, kids may have missed somewhere along the way. And that can also be done in an inclusion class. We do have remedial kids and uh, or, uh, remedial classes and inclusion classes sort of happening side by side. Um, so you, you may you may see both of those used in conjunction, but they are they are different models. So gifted, uh, we really serve gifted kids in, in two different ways. In our secondary schools, uh, the, the most common way we serve gifted kids are with our honors classes, uh, advanced content. We, we take uh, gifted identified kids who are high performing and we um, put them in a class with uh, students who have not been gifted identified uh, but are also high performing, high achieving. And we're going to give them content that is uh, at or above uh, the, the regular grade levels. We're going to try to gonna get them to that grade level and then try to push them beyond that grade level so that uh, what they're getting is somewhat different from what students would get in a regular college prep class. So an honors class may, may move more quickly, uh, it may have more content, uh, it may dig a little more deeply into concepts, and, and usually in our honors classes uh, there's an eye on um, either a, a dual enrollment class or an AP class or something that we're trying to build skills for. So you'll hear our, our honors teachers in, in uh, grades 6 through 10 talk a lot about pre-AP or using AP strategies. And that's just, just to try to prepare students for those upper level classes when they get to, to 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. We also serve students in gifted clusters. And in the gifted cluster, what we do is we take uh, a gifted endorsed teacher who's in a, in a regular education classroom, so let's say it's like chemistry at the high school. And we'll group together uh, kids who aren't in the honors chemistry, but they don't necessarily want to be in the honors chemistry class. Um, they'll group the, those gifted students together in a regular education, regular CP level class with that gifted endorsed teacher. And that teacher is going to change something about the class. They're going to 
uh, change how the content's presented or change the product that the kids do at the end of the unit. But in some way, some shape, some form, we're going to differentiate for the needs of those gifted learners in that regular education. Now, there are other models that we, we can use. We can talk about gifted internships. We can talk about uh, direct study. We can talk about uh, gifted collaboration. Uh, there are all kinds of different models that are out there, but those are the two that we most commonly see used at our 612 schools. Uh, we have two different accelerated tracks in Coppola County right now. Uh, our accelerated math class or math track begins in sixth grade. We identify students based on a number of different criteria. It's primarily their benchmark scores from the year before, their milestone scores, uh, classroom performance. Uh, some teacher recommendation goes into that too. And then sometimes, you know, we, we uh, listen to parents and the parents feel like their, their child is willing and capable of doing the work. We'll sometimes place those children on the accelerated track too. But basically in the accelerated math track, what we do is we take three years worth of math and we're gonna compact it down into two years of, of the student's education. So in sixth grade, the student does all of the sixth grade standards and half of the seventh grade standards. And then in seventh grade, they cover the rest of seventh grade standards and all of eighth grade standards so that when those students get to our ninth grade or get to eighth grade, uh, they're ready to take the ninth grade algebra one course, the high school level course uh, while they're still in eighth grade. And the, the real benefit for that is that it gives them the, the chance to take AP Calculus as seniors or AP Statistics or uh, an extra dual enrollment class. And basically, if our kids are on the accelerated math track, we want them to graduate with five math credits at a, at a bare minimum. Um, our accelerated science track begins in eighth grade, and we typically only put students on that track if they are in the accelerated math track just because having that algebra uh, background is, is really important as you're working through physical science. Uh, they, the eighth grade regular science class is a physical science class. So all we do is instead of those eighth grade students taking that regular eighth grade physical science class, they take the high school physical science class uh, as eighth graders. And just like with math, we're trying to give them a year ahead. So they take that fifth math or fifth science class by the time they uh, get to their senior years of, of high school, whether that's AP biology or AP chemistry or uh, AP environmental science or physics, uh, something like that. We want those kids to graduate with five credits in science uh, when they leave our high school. Uh, so when we talk about AP classes, uh, AP just stands for advanced placement. And AP is, uh, the, we're going to take a college level course, we'll take the content that you would see in a college level course, and we're going to teach it on our high school campus or our junior high school campus um, uh, with trained teachers, teachers who go through the summer training with college board, they're called uh, AP Summer Institutes. And uh, basically, uh, students take um, these rigorous classes, they're the most rigorous classes we offer on our campus, uh, with the, the goal being to prepare them for uh, college level work when they, when they graduate from high school. And there is credit possibly in uh, an AP course. You may hear people talk about AP exams. Uh, an AP exam, at the, end of the, at the end of the course, the student will take an AP exam, and um, most of the time we consider a passing score to be a three. Uh, if the student receives a three on a scale from one to five, uh, then most colleges will give them credit for a comparable course in, uh, in, in, their, in their college um, a transcript. So, for example, if you take uh, AP English Language, which I taught when I was at the high school, uh, if you take AP English Language and you, you score a three on the exam, uh, then you're more than likely going to get credit for English 1101 when you get to college. Um, now, sometimes there's a little bit different. Some, college, some, some schools require a higher score than a three for, for uh, credit purposes. Uh, some schools will give you extra credit if you uh, score that, that, that perfect five. Um, but regardless of the exam, even though the exam is important, regardless of the exam, uh, the real value of an AP class to me is uh, it's going to give you the chance to just taste a college level class without actually beginning that college GPA. Uh, we're going to give you the chance to to see, you know, if this is something that you're actually interested in, something that you're passionate about um, before you have to, to pay money to take it or uh, before you do it in dual enrollment and begin that college transcript. So it's, it's a, I don't want to say it's safer, but uh, it's definitely, you know, long term wise, uh, that GPA that you, that you start when you, when you start taking college classes, that, that sticks with you a lot longer than your high school GPA does, uh, even though that's obviously very important too, especially when it comes to scholarship money and things like that.
Um, we offer 15 AP courses on uh, Coppell County's campuses this year. We have 14 at the high school, uh, and we have the AP World History class at, at CA Gray. Uh, we're looking to expand those over the next few years. Our goal is to is to have an AP class that will work for, you know, for just about everybody. We want everybody to have a, an AP class that they might possibly be interested in. Uh, not that everybody has to take AP, uh, but we want people to feel like they have the options uh, to take AP if they want to. And then finally, dual enrollment. Dual enrollment has many different names. If you came through high school, when I came through high school, it was called post-secondary option or, or PSO. Uh, it's been called move on already. It's been called Excel. Uh, I'm sure like you know, five years from now, it'll be a totally different name. I have no clue what it'll be called. Uh, but regardless of what it's called, it's the exact same concept. Uh, it's, this is an actual college class taught by an actual college instructor. And it's typically taught on a college campus. So most of the time our kids who take uh, dual enrollment classes with, with Southern Regional Tech, which is right over from our high school, they actually go to the campus and they take the classes on campus. They, offer, like, they do offer some classes online, and we have kids who take online classes through SRTC or ABAC or Valdosta State. Uh, so there are other options for that too. Um, but regardless, the, the, the goal of the taking the dual enrollment class is to begin accruing college credits so that by the time you graduate from high school, you have hours in the bag. Those are hours that do not count towards your, your HOPE hours. So it gives you a, a little bit of flexibility there when it comes to the, the what, what HOPE pay for when you get to college. Uh, they changed the rules on that recently. So if you've had a child who's gone through previously, uh, this may be different, but now students can only earn up to 30 hours for free. Uh, they can earn more than that, but you have to pay for it. We don't pay for it beyond that. And it has to come off of uh, the, the approved course list. So. Uh, anything that's a core academic area, so English, math, science, social studies, world languages, um, basically anything that's used in the high school HOPE uh, scholarship calculation, that's going to be approved. And then anything that's a, a college and technical agricultural education, the CTAE course, uh, as, as long as it's just aligned with one of the, the Godot um, career clusters and pathways, uh, those will be approved. Um, tenth grade kids can take uh, Dual enrollment classes, that is possible. They have to meet certain criteria for it. And then when kids get to 11th and 12th grade, uh, if, you're, if you're accepted by the school, then uh, you can take any approved course that you want to take. And that's also a change because in the past we've had kids who, like all 10th graders, could take it if they wanted to, or 9th graders. Um, but now it is just primarily 11th and 12th grade. So let's talk about colleges and what colleges are looking for with, with kids. Uh, first of all, obviously, they want you to graduate from high school. That's kind of the, the, the biggest thing. Uh, they're going to ask you to, to graduate with at least 23 credits, and you see the list of stuff that they, they want you to take. Um, the biggest uh, change for kids who are graduating on that college prep pathway and headed for a, a college or a university in the state of Georgia is that requirement of two years of a world language. A lot of our kids will forget about that and then, you know, get stuck because they, they decide maybe later on they, they want to go to college. Um, but that is important. Uh, you can find all this information that I'm about to talk through on most of the college websites. I did call some admissions offices and talk to admissions officers about some of these things. And uh, it may change from year to year too. So maybe some of the data that I have is a little bit older. Uh, but anyway, this is this will at least give you a ballpark as to what to look for when you're thinking about different colleges that you might possibly be interested in. So Southern Regional Tech, uh, I started with our local technical college. It, it differs based on the program that you're going to be in. So the requirements to get in to the welding program uh, may be different than the, the requirements that are required for like the, the LPN program. Uh, so if you are interested in possibly going to Southern Regional Tech, then give them a call, find out what the requirements are, requirements are for that particular program, and begin working towards uh, hitting those, those requirements. So beginning with ABAC, ABAC uh, is our you know, local college here in Tipton. You see the average SAT and ACT scores there. Those are a little above what the uh, Georgia regions say that you have to have to go to a, a Georgia college or university. Um, see that uh, that 510 is a little above where it was previously. So a 480 and 440, what we're looking for for like a, a, a bare minimum or 17 on the ACT. Uh, we're looking at a 19 here. But you'll notice that the minimums that ABAC sets are a little bit lower than what the, the 
university system says that they'll take. All right, see Ballas Estate there. Ballas Estate is a little above where ABAC is. Um, we're looking at a 10-22 total score, or a 19 on math, 21 on the ELA reading portion, a 20 composite score. Uh, and notice that GPA has creeped up too. For ABAC, the average GPA is a 3.0. When we get to Ballas Estate, we're talking about a 3.47. So one of the really interesting things I found whenever I was talking to uh, an admissions officer at, at Ballas Estate, he transferred me over to uh, one of their researchers, and the researcher said that only 8.3% of incoming freshmen at Valdosta State um, took an AP class in 2019. That's really the last year they had uh, data available. Um, so that 8.3%, that's a, that's a fairly low number, I thought. Uh, he didn't have any data on dual enrollment, so I'm going to assume that a lot of those kids went the dual enrollment route. Um, but I was surprised to see that, that low of a percentage for students of Valdosta State taking AP classes. All right, you see Albany State here. Albany State, the average scores are a little bit below where uh, uh, Vanessa State is. Look, you see those. Um, you see the GPA is a little bit lower too. Uh, and I, I didn't talk to anybody at Albany State. I couldn't get anybody to return my call there. Uh, but I talked to an account, a counselor at Fort Valley State. And the counselor at Fort Valley State, when I was talking to him, I asked him about the, these average scores. And he said that they... Uh, obviously, the scores are important. Everybody's going to pay attention to the scores, but he was saying that, uh, like at Fort Valley, and he was saying the same thing is probably true for Albany State, uh, that they really look towards uh, trying to find well-rounded kids. Um, uh, Fort Valley wants kids who are involved in extracurriculars, kids who play sports, kids who are in clubs, kids who sing in the choir and play in the band. Uh, they value those things more than they value their SAT and ACT scores. Uh, if, if the kid's been super involved on campus, they're more than likely to be given the opportunity to come uh, to their school regardless of their numbers. And that's because they just want to have well-rounded kids on campus. So I don't want you to be uh, alarmed by those the, the average scores here. It's just a, a different value. The value's placed somewhere else besides these, these you know, numbers. All right, Georgia Southern. You see Georgia Southern is going to be a tick above where Boston uh, State was. Um, both in SAT and ACT. GPA is pretty comparable. Um, you see now that we're moving out from Southwest Georgia, you'll watch these uh, requirements get a little bit higher. There's Fort Valley State I just talked about, getting in conjunction with Albany State. All right, so uh, the North Avenue Trade School, uh, which is, uh, you know, some people call it Georgia Tech, whatever. Um, Notice how we are going to really seriously jump up in our required scores here. An average score of a 1465 out of a 1600 on the SAT. Um, that's 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 a that's a major that's a major step up. Uh, the difference between the uh, about Austin State and the Georgia Southern and you know Georgia Tech is is is, is huge. It's a, it's a it's a it's a big jump. Um, they say they don't have an absolute SAT requirement, but a bottom end number to shoot for is a, is a 1390. That's going to be the 25th percentile of an incoming freshman class. So you know, that's going to be 25% of students are going to score that or lower on the SAT, uh, which is pretty incredible. 1390 is still a, a great score on the SAT. And that's going to be the bottom bottom quarter at, at Georgia Tech with that. Uh, you see the, the ACT requirements, they say the same thing there. They're shooting for a 31 there, also very high. And you'll notice that the GPA for the first time has, has crept above a 4.0. Uh, so how do you get a GPA above a 4.0? You take classes that uh, the um, state of Georgia gives you extra credits for. So uh, if you are taking an AP class or an IB course or uh, a dual enrollment course, then those courses on a scale of 4.0 are, are actually given a score out of 5. So there's a chance to go above a 4.0 if you take multiple AP, IB, dual enrollment classes. And you'll see that on average, uh, Georgia Tech freshmen are gonna take somewhere between seven and 13 of those upper level classes. Your SAT score is a little bit lower than, than Georgia Tech, um, but notice that the GPA is higher here. And the uh, big thing here too is when you look at Georgia Tech, when you look at University of Georgia, um, they are looking at rigorous academic 
work on the transcript. They want to see that you've taken the most rigorous classes that your high school has to offer. So if you're looking to go into a Georgia Tech or a University of Georgia, then you want to shoot from anywhere from 7 to 12 AP or dual enrollment classes before you graduate from Coffin County High School. Uh, the nice thing about the University of Georgia is uh, if you're the Val or the Sal of your graduating class, uh, then you get to go to the University of Georgia automatically, like you're, you're in. That's just bottom line of it. Nothing else really matters outside of that. So uh, that's something to definitely shoot for if you're interested in those schools and in that school. And then I wanted the one that was just a, a little farther off, and we talk Ivy League a lot, and when people think about you know, uh, institutions of higher learning, of course, they immediately talk about you know the University of Georgia, but then they may also talk about a school like Harvard, too. Uh, but <laughs> You see that composite score of a 1520 is the average score for a student at Harvard. A 1520 is the average score for a student at Harvard, or a, a 34 on the ACT is average. Uh, that bottom 25% is going to be at 1460 or, or, or lower than that. So, so 1460 is the 25th percentile score, or a 33 on the ACT is the 25th percentile score, um, something that you have to shoot for if you're looking for that. Uh, and then notice that the GPA is also higher here too. 93% um, of Harvard freshmen were in the top 10% of the graduating class. I'm not a statistics person, but I think it's always interesting when you see stats that almost seem to reverse of each other. And you see the exact same thing about the, the average Harvard student taking those rigorous classes. Uh, one thing that was really interesting is if you look at uh, lots of schools this, this upcoming year, uh, they're, they're waiving that SAT or ACT requirement. So if, if you don't have a 1520 on the SAT, but you still want to go to Harvard, this would be a good year for you to apply for it. So once you go through that first round, in, in the fall they have uh, early action, and you apply for schools, and they look uh, solely at numbers in that first round. Um, after you get past that, if you're not accepted, if you're waitlisted, uh, then, then they're going to start looking at other things besides just your numbers. So they may take a look at, uh, you know, the fact that you're involved in uh, different community service projects or the fact that you are uh, a leader in a club or that you play sports. Or They're looking for, for kids who, who are trying to find their passions and who are involved on campus and who are well-rounded enough that when they come to their college campus, they're not going to just you know, sit in the dorm room all day long. They want kids who are going to be involved on campus. And, uh, in, in different areas. And certainly things like job shadowing, work-based learning, those things all make you pop when it comes to uh, college recruiters and college admissions officers. Uh, they they want to see that you're that you're passionate about something, that you're interested in something enough to do more than just you know say that you're interested in it, that you actually are going out and trying to learn more about a particular area. So at this point in, the, in our parent meetings, uh, I turned it over to our principals and allowed them to talk through their schools a little bit. I'm going to do that now. I'm going to give you the videos for our principals to talk through and let you see them. And then I'm going to come back at the very end and kind of close this out. But what can Willie J. Williams do to help your child prepare for five, six, seven years down the road? Well, we offer, uh, we do career awareness activities. Um, career inventories, assessments. Um, we try to give our kids a plethora of information. If you go to a sixth grader, more than likely, if you go to a sixth grader and ask, what are your plans when you graduate from high school? What do you plan to do once you're out of school and you're working? A lot of times we get, I don't know. Or we get, I'm gonna play professional ball, which is fine which is fine however we need something to fall back on we need something to fall back on so we do the career assessments career inventories and try to give kids some ideas of some things that they might be interested in uh we also this year I'm excited about a course that we're going to be offering this year as an as our as one of our uh, connections classes where we're going to teach soft skills job soft skills, job awareness. Um, we're gonna be looking at different jobs. We're gonna be looking at pay of different jobs. That's always important for our kids too. They wanna know how much money we're gonna make. 
And so uh, we're going to be looking at those things. Uh, community speakers. We, we would love to have our have people come into our school from our community to speak with our kids. And last year, uh, COVID kind of put a damper on that a little bit. And so, uh, but this year, hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to allow some community speakers into our school to talk with our kids. Uh, career fairs. Uh, we do a career fair at Willie J. Williams uh, where we have businesses in Cockle County to come in, they set up, they talk to our kids about the jobs that they offer. And so that works, that works very well too. Last year we started a STEM program with our sixth graders. Um, and this year we're going to roll that into seventh grade. So we'll have a STEM program going for sixth and seventh grade. Uh, that is going to be, that's going to be a big plus for our school. Um, when we start talking about science, technology, engineering, and math, um, those are a lot of crucial areas in our, in our workforces. And so uh, we are we're on, on the bottom step of that. And uh, we're excited about that program coming in to Willie J. Williams. And so uh, hopefully our, our kids are too. I think it's gonna be great for Willie J. And our, and our kids. And we also, we also give out uh, the REACH scholarship. That's a $10,000 scholarship that, we, that one of our seventh grade students earns, and then it follows them through to eighth grade, ninth grade, and then on through high school. And if they continue on with uh, the mandates from the REACH scholarship, then at the end, when they graduate, they receive the $10,000 uh, to go to a college. So that's a that's a great program for our for our students as well. All right, at CA Gray, uh, we we focus on our parent nights as far as an offering of a time to be able to share some of the things that will kind of get you pumped up about what your child needs to be working toward. And one thing you can be working toward is getting Hope or Zell Miller as far as a scholarship. All right. Now, one thing that I know for sure that has been a blessing in my home is my daughter receiving that Hope Scholarship, all right? So, and it starts now at CA Gray. Let me say it again now, it starts at CA Gray. If you're an eighth grader at Gray, you take your first what? High school class, at first credit, when you take PE. So you don't wanna mess around with PE because that starts that GPA roll right then. And that's extremely important. And if there's any way to where you can start saving your parents some money, you want to do it so it starts with me, all right? Also, too, um, I, I mean, we also have courses that lead to graduation, and ABAC and SRTC, they, they're part of our, our parent nights as well, so you'll see Miss Lewis, and she'll have a team, and whatnot on our parents' night, and when she comes out to share. Uh, and also, too, we'll talk about dual rope and those things of that nature, too, as well. Now, one thing that we also do um, at CA Gray, we do weekly advisory meetings, which is huge because that gives the student an opportunity to start seeing from the counselors a pathway of where they got to go. You want to make sure no matter what, as a, as a student and, and as a parent, you start getting your mind wrapped around how quick CA Gray is going to pass through so you can get to high school and be prepared. All right, so those conversations, those dinner conversations need to be about what did they talk to you about during the weekly advisory meeting this week? What's going on? And also, too, this year, I got a great idea from Ms. Nobles. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be sharing some career stuff throughout the week on our announcements. And if, who's, who's been to CA grade before? Raise your hand. So you know I love those announcements, all right? So, so during the announcements, hey, I'm going to be sharing things about, hey, careers and what you, well, you, if you choose to be a doctor, if you choose to be a lawyer, the requirements and everything that it takes to get there and obviously the beautiful thing is how much money you're going to make all right because that's what everybody wants to hear they want to know the money they're going to make again all right so like i said during those advisory times we'll be sharing a lot of good, good information about also about careers but colleges and everything also to the reach scholarship just like what, what mr horn was just talking about a second ago the reach scholar student is selected at willie j but now just because you get that scholarship doesn't mean that you're gonna maintain it and keep it unless you meet the requirements all the way through school, all right? So it's not you receive the $10,000 and you're done. No ma'am, no sir. 
you receive that scholarship and then you're going to have Miss Nobles is going to be tracking you all the way through so you can maintain it. And it's all based on grades, behavior, all that good stuff. Right, Miss Nobles? Right. So you, if you get it, hey, it's a powerful thing. And I, here's another thing to think about for those of you who are interested in that scholarship. Um, when a student gets that $10,000 or they're awarded that $10,000, a lot of times they're also awarded additional money when they get to the colleges because the colleges and universities, they match it. All right, so you could turn ten thousand dollars as a as a seventh grader potentially into forty fifty thousand dollars. All right, so that's huge. That's huge. All right, so be thinking about that. Those of you who are going to be at Willie J, bust your tail, do what you got to do because that's powerful, very very powerful. And just think about it. if you got the hope, you got the, the reach and all that. Woo! And you might get to buy yourself a car. Um, <laughs> all right, so. Uh, Career assessments are a, a big thing also too at CA grade with our counselors as far as picking uh, for like eighth and ninth grade students. We do that in the computer labs. Uh, that's something that our counselors work closely with our students as far as getting them aligned to what they're interested in, what they're pumped up about doing. Um, this year, we're gonna make sure that a counselor is going to meet with each student at least twice throughout the course of the year. Now, I would, I would bargain to say that we've been doing it, but this time we're gonna really keep up with it so that everybody knows what you're working toward, all right? And also too, my counselor's gonna be reaching out to your parents too as well, so you can be as informed, because I know how young people can be. Did anybody talk to you about a career? No. Did you have any homework? No. I, I know that, because I had kids too. Um, like I said, I spoke to you earlier about career and um, college announcements. One thing that we do too as well at CA Great, and we did this before, you know, before COVID, but we always had guest speakers that would come in. But we're, we're, on, we're on a normal operation time now, all right? So you know that means that people will be able to come into the school and talk to students about careers, okay? So like I said, we're, we're, we're back to business again. All right, this year, a special thing that we're gonna be doing is our counselor's corner. Um, that, that's gonna be something that's gonna take place in the cafeteria, all right? They'll be, they'll be able to speak with Ms. Nobles and she'll, she'll have her team there as well to kind of discuss some of the, and share some, some information and stats and whatnot that you need to get to this job or go to that school. So we're gonna do that during our, our cafeteria time. Uh, college tours with various clubs, and, that's, and that's, that's big right there. One thing that I always try to encourage every student to, to do at CA grade no matter what, School is more than just going to the classes and a sport, okay? All right? You don't have to be an athlete to be involved in your school. Be involved in the club, just like, like Mr. Edwards was saying earlier. Get in a club. Once you find out what's going on in that club, then become a leader in the club. That's going to spark your knowledge and get you pumped up, get you more understanding what's going on, and you never know how it may play out in the end. All right, as you become more and more involved. That builds your connection to the school. Now, I, I like, I, I've given CA Gray the, the nickname, the Dream Factory, because I believe, I sincerely believe, that at school, dreams are where, where they're nurtured, all right? You may have a dream at night laying in the beds, thinking about it, but what's gonna get you there is the work that you do each and every day at school. And what your teachers do for you is, is they help you put it together. All right, they give you the pieces, they give you the building blocks to put it together. Hey, you can't get anywhere without a, without a teacher. That's the real deal. If you, anybody in here, tell me, tell me a professional in here that's, that's, that, that made it off, made it to what they wanted to do, and no teacher had nothing to do with their lives. Raise your hand. Nobody. So the teacher is the one that helps support you. All right? So it's so important that you get involved. You, you, you participate in your school. Be involved in everything you can. Well, if, it's, if it is sports, that's your thing, do it. But get in something and don't just come to school. I like to joke and say this, don't just come to school and use the restroom, all right? <laughs> come to school and be involved, all right? And you'll love it and you'll wanna be there, all right? Because you'll have a connection, you'll have a tie. And one thing too, every student in here, all of you, just like your parents, you're writing your own story, all right? And that's a powerful thing. And if you're not involved in your school and you're writing your story, 
you're going to be upset in the long run if you didn't participate. So you got to think like that, okay? Um, team Maze. Team Maze is a big thing. How many of you, my former students participated in Team Maze in here? All right, good deal. Hey, it was very informative, was it not? All right. And, it, and it's one thing at grade we say, we choose to work smart because choices will help you or hurt you. And that's one thing about Team Maze. Team Maze is set up to say that. If you choose to do drugs, if you choose to study, if you choose to do this or that, there is a consequence. And the goal should be that you should choose smart things that are going to help you align to get you where you need to be so you'll be successful. We do Team Maze at CA Grace, great program. The community gets all involved. We've got all kinds of volunteers that on, on a running scale. Most of the time, it's about 200 volunteers, right? All right, Ms. Hotbreaker says that's right. About 200 volunteers coming to our school, take over our gym, and have all these different kinds of scenarios set up. It is a beautiful thing, beautiful thing. And kids learn about what will happen if you make the right choice or you don't make the right choice. Um, also, too, uh, at CA Gray, like Mr. Uh, Edwards alluded to, we do have AP World where history is part of our ninth grade program, too, as well. Let me go ahead and change gears here a little bit about what we're going to do to help you get ready for whatever post secondary option you have. One, we have 14 advanced placement courses we're going to offer. Uh, we have dual enrollment opportunities at SRTC, at VSU, at AVAC. Um, so get involved in those opportunities. Get yourself college credit and be exposed to college type rigor while you're still in high school. It will get you ready to be successful in, in college. And I think that's what a lot of these students are going to talk about as well, is being prepared when you get there. As much as earning that credit, being ready for the rigor you're going to face when you get there. Okay? We have, this year, we're going to add advisement back in. So once a week, you're going to meet with an advisement teacher in that time. We're going to have lessons on preparing for college, hope scholarship calculations, uh, all, all kinds of lessons we have to get ready for post-secondary. That's also going to be another trusted adult in the building that you're going to have for three years that's going to be there for you as a resource to help you get ready for life after high school. Okay? We've restructured our guidance department. We were able to add an additional counselor this year. We've got four counselors now. We've divided their caseloads by alphabet. So Ms. Crenshaw over here, she has your E through K. She's going to be your counselor, last name E through K. So they've all got that. We feel like that's going to help them to develop better relationships with their students. They're going to be able to start your plan with you as a 10th grader and work your plan through, through, through your time at Coppin County High School, get you ready for whatever post-secondary option you want to explore. Okay. Uh, let me skip down a little bit. Uh, moving on to college. Uh, well, we're going to have a little more information coming to you. Uh, we used to have a really good academic guy that explained a lot of the information that Mr. Edwards went over. It talked all about our CTAE pathways. We are going to be resurrecting that. And so coming in 22-23, you'll see the resurrection of the onward academic guy that used to be uh, there for all students. So a couple things we've got to help you get informed. Uh, one, we'll have our pro fair. That'll be in... October 14th. October 14th. October 14th. We'll have 20 plus colleges and universities will set up shop in our gym. They'll set up a table. You can come around, students, parents, talk to them, get all the information you want about their degree programs and their admission requirements. Anything they have to offer, you'll have some time to explore and figure out what you want to do. We'll also be bringing in part of the Peach Day Tour, the University of Georgia. Georgia Tech and Georgia State. They'll send representatives to us. Right? You'll have an opportunity. They'll, they'll be there promoting their schools. You'll have an opportunity to ask any questions you may have about those institutions. They'll be here with, with us. I don't, know we, I don't think we have a date on that one yet, but it's to be announced. We'll, we'll get that to you. And the last thing I want to talk about, Mr. Edwards talked about timing of getting into school and one thing you'll hear when you get to be a be a senior you'll talk about early action and that's that you turn in your application in uh, early on in the fall of your senior year when you do that they're going to look at pretty much just look at numbers okay they're going to look at your sat score 
They're going to look at your GPA, and they're going to look at how many rigor courses you have. So how many AP or dual enrollment courses you've taken is in a percentage of what your school has to offer. Okay? They're going to look at that, and they're going to do three things with it. They're either going to accept you with your numbers, they're going to deny you, or they're going to defer you. Defer means they're going to ask you for some more information. Our last thing we have on here, and you'll hear us talk a lot about this in the coming years, is our Packer Plus One. Okay, we want every student to get not just a high school diploma, but a plus one. And that plus one is how you are building your resume to move on to your post-secondary option. Okay? And when you if you get deferred, or a lot of schools will have this as part of their action. I'm talking mostly about the University of Georgia and Georgia Tech as far as early action and deferment goes. But a lot of schools are going to ask you not just the numbers, they want to know what kind of person you are, what kind of experiences you've had, what kind of a leader you are. So that plus one may be if I want to go to ABAC, well, in, in a major in, in an agricultural field, well, at Coffin County High School, I've got an ag pathway, I've been an FFA, I've had opportunities to compete on, on in, in those competitions. Maybe I'm going to, uh, I want to go to SRTC. I've completed a pathway there. I'm ready to move on to my next pathway. Um, maybe it's maybe it's an SAT score I need. It's a, the AP credits I need to get into whatever university I want. So that plus one is something that we want you to get in addition to your diploma that builds that resume that helps you to get into the school of your choice, the career of your choice, into the military, whatever that may be. We want to prepare you for that. So not just thinking about graduating, getting a diploma, a diploma plus what you need to move forward. So. Um, but what really, really helped me uh, was uh, declaring the pathway. I'm not sure if uh, Willie J, do they, I know they're starting training you into getting a pathway, but I know definitely in TA Great that that's where I uh, started my pathway, which is family and consumer sciences. So I stuck with my pathway. Um, I know that a lot of you all may choose a pathway because I think it, it was well, when I was in school it was required that we had a pathway. Um, so um, I stuck with my pathway. I know some of you may uh, leave the pathway or come back to it, but then that is fine. That's how you um, find out what you want to do exactly. So um, like I stated, I stayed in my pathway, went to Fort Valley State University, um, which is known for agriculture, family consumer sciences. Uh, falls into that category of ag. I would say the one thing I wish I knew was the future, but obviously that can't happen. My biggest advice to everyone is self-advocacy, and Toriana kind of touched on this with the initiative, um, and they tell you, you have to do it yourself. You have to put in the work yourself. You know, they give you all these great opportunities, career fairs, I don't know, teen maze, et cetera whatever it is that they do. But not many students have that quality to have some self-advocacy, to, for themselves, say, I'm going to the counselor today to find out my opportunities in this area. I, I feel very best for not only getting into college, but actually working through college, was two qualities that are bigger than any grade you could ever get. One quality is leadership. My last five years of grade school, uh, eighth through to twelfth grade, yeah, something like that. <laughs> um, I was in marching band, and through the last two years, my junior and senior year, I was leadership in the marching band, and I feel like that is not only what helps helping me get accepted into VSU, but also like I guess why they kept me, <laughs> and. Um, the other quality is the ability and willingness to learn. So school, college, all that is so much more than just checking through boxes to get a job. It's about like just learning how to 